hello and welcome to the third episode of Northwest Knitting. My name is Kathy and I live in Eugene, Oregon in the Willamette Valley with my husband Dennis. I have two wonderful grown children and a wonderful son-in-law and daughter-in-law and a granddaughter and they're, all those people are very important to me. Um, but Dennis and I live here by ourselves and I spend a lot of time here in this little room playing with my yarn and thinking of new crafty things to explore and play with. So I just got back from three or four days in the um, Deschutes National Forest at Odell Lake with um, 12 other people. And it was a great fun time. We are vaccinated, we tested and got together for the first time in a long time. And it was really a great event. So I'm feeling pretty good today. So I wanted to talk to you um, about two sweaters. Neither of these are brand new. I did the uh, cardigan last spring and um, the, um, the, the uh, pullover I did back in um, um, January of 2020. But as I was getting ready to do this podcasting, I did a whole episode um, talking about these two um, sweaters and I had so much technical difficulty that I gave up on it. So um, I thought I'd go ahead and talk about them now for a couple of reasons. And, um, and even though they're, they're not brand new. So next time, hopefully I'll have one of my finished objects and I can tell you all about that. But one reason I thought of telling you about my cardigan um, is because the yarn is, um, it's Peace Fleece yarn and the colorway is Porter, Porterfield Plum. And um, it really comes to mind because of um, all the terrible things that are happening in the world right now. But let me just tell you some of the background. This is um, the Bonnie Cardigan by Orlaine Suchet. Um, and she calls herself Tet Besh Knitwear or Beche. I'm not sure. Um, and it's the um, third pattern I've done of hers. And so far, I've really liked everything um, that um, all, all of the patterns I've done, particularly a um, pattern called um, Arnica Cardigan, which is for babies. It was really fun. So anyway, first let me tell you about the wool. Peace Fleece is, um, um, it's a wool and spun yarn. And I first came upon it many, many years ago, back before podcasting and um, I think before smartphones too. So I'm pretty sure I heard about it through reading knitting blogs. Um, and I'm not sure I've even seen it on the shelves in any yarn store yet. Um, but I do see that it's become more popular and I'm hearing people um, um, on podcasts and European podcasts talking about um, peacefully. So I have to think that it's getting to be more popular. Um, and I know that Wooly Thistle is carrying it also, or at least some of the colors. But I'm pretty sure that I got it from the Peace Fleece website. So um, as usual, anything I make reference to will be in the show notes. So just click on show more down below this um, film and um, you'll see all the links of all the sweaters and um, things that I talk about. So I first heard about Peace Fleece um, a long time ago, as I said, and 
I um, plan to make the Peace Fleece Everyday Cardigan. And this was a bottom-up seam sweater, a pretty basic, very nice cardigan. And I knit the whole thing and I had so much trouble with it that I, um, I, I ended up taking it apart a few years ago. So it wasn't looking at me reproachfully anymore. And um, I wound up the yarn and um, I, I then made a new project. I'll tell you about next. But um, I really did, um, I like the yarn. It's a little bit, um, it's, it's um, pretty on the, um, a little bit on the rougher side and it really transforms with blocking. So um, this turned out very drapey and nice, and um, I do really like the yarn. It's not super wash, um, and um, okay, so the history. Back in the 1980s, the people who started um, Peace Fleece decided that they wanted to do something positive during the Cold War. The United States was having a Cold War with Russia, meaning there wasn't active um, warfare between the two countries. There were some proxy wars, um, but there was a lot of conflict. And that was a time a lot of people in this country who were little remember hiding under their desks and preparation for um, a terrible war, nuclear war, really. Um, and I'm sure that little children in Russia were experiencing the same fear. Um, but uh, So anyway, Peace Fleece people thought, we don't have anything against the individual people. We support peace. We support, we love people from all around the world. Let's get some yarn from Russia and mix it with American wool and we'll have a combination so we can show cooperation with others even though our countries are having conflict. So I'm sure it took a little bit of doing, but they got a huge bale of wool from Russia and they made peace fleece. And their motto was warm wool in a cold war. So eventually the Cold War ended, the Soviet Union dismantled, and um, I'm sure they thought, and I, I didn't hear anything about this specifically on their website, but I guess if I were them I'd be thinking, have we lost the purpose of our journey here? Well, it happened that they began to learn more about the difficulties of um, Native Americans in this country. And they, um, I think, got to know more about the um, Navajo um, tribe, in, Navajo Nation in particular, and began doing business with Navajo Nation to buy wool from them. So it's about 75% wool and 25% mohair. So um, anyway, I got this probably about um, a year ago, and it's in one of my very favorite colors, worsted weight. They also have a um, DK weight as well, but in fewer colors. So I'm very, very happy with the wool. Um, I, my intention in making this sweater was to make it more of a jacket, and it really turned out that way. So let me show you a few things about it. It has um, um, it has a, a short row collar. So let me get up here and see if you can see. It's wider here, and then it comes down here. And it has some very nice lateral or horizontal braids at the wrists. And you can see the nice tweediness 
of the piece fleece. And then you can see I've really made it a jackety jacket. Has a nice little um, split back there. And here is a very nifty lateral braid again. So the neck has an invisible ribbed um, seamed bind off. Um, and also my very cute buttons from Textile Garden. I was a little worried about short rows on the collar um, because I had never done um, um, short rows with ribbing, but they just, it turned out so nicely. And um, I do short, German short rows and it's just really a lovely detail. She's, her intention was to make it look a little bit like a bomber um, jacket. You know, those, um, usually they were black leather jackets with a, with a, um, um, a collar that came down like this. So that was her intention here. Even if you've never done this invisible bind off, which I, I think is tubular bind off is, the, is another name for it. I really suggest that it's the only way to go if you want to do this collar. It, it just really makes it a great detail. So I did have one um, little issue with doing that sewn bind off. I, I normally have to go into a room and be very quiet because it's, I find it really challenging to do, um, to concentrate. But um, so what you do is you take a very long strand of the yarn and you put it on a tapestry needle and then you're, you're, um, you're doing the bind off. Um, by sewing it instead of knitting it. And so the thing is that that long piece of yarn that you use has to be pulled through every single stitch that you do. And when I came around to the very end, I found that my long strand at one place had become thinner. And, or maybe it was already thin and I wasn't noticing it. Generally, I don't find this yarn to be varied in terms of its um, heft. It's, it's pretty even. It's not a thick, thin type of yarn. Um, but anyway, when I got to the end, I noticed that it was getting thinner. And I did finish it all as well. I didn't have to do any change anything or do anything different. But um, I was getting a little concerned about that at the end there. I wonder if that has to do with um, the yarn being woolen spun instead of worsted spun. Um, and I'd like to hear other people's experiences. I have quite a lot of woolen spun yarn in my uh, cabinet behind me. And so I'm hoping that um, it's not particularly that. But anyway, I thought I'd better mention it. I'm really a fan of the yarn, um, and I'm definitely going to use it again. I highly recommend it. Um, and the reason I wanted to mention it is that it seems that having piece fleece go through the, the whole idea of creating a yarn during a Cold War, and then having the Cold War end, and then having the situation we have now, feels, um, it feels melancholy to me. It really does. So I hope it's a, a short-term issue. Um, at any rate, um, I ha I do, I'm very, very happy with the pattern. Um, I really recommend it. it I, I did a bigger size than I probably needed to. I did a, um, the third size up, so once again, 
bigger size than strictly necessary, but it is great because um, almost all the sweaters I have would fit very nicely under this one. So I'm really happy with it. So I definitely recommend both the pattern and the yarn um, and, and feel, you know, really great about it. So, um, let me think. I do also want to show you my, um, this should look very, very familiar to many of, if not all of you. This is my soldatna crop, except mine is not a crop. But that, that's the name of it, Soul Dot in the Crop by Boyland Knitworks, and uh, her name is Caitlin Hunter. So this one is the exact opposite of my Peace Fleece. On this one, I used all superwash wool, um, which I think I've mentioned before, I was really into um, superwash because of the colors. They're just fantastic. Um, and, um, the main color is, um, Malabrigo Washed. And, um, I just, I just really love this plummy color. And then the rest of the colors were all yarns that I had either just a, you know, a single skein or, um, you know, leftovers that I used. Um, I know I didn't have a lot of this turquoise, which is the only one I can't remember and I don't even know if I saved it. Um, the gray behind here is La Bien um, DK, and I had the very good fortune of being able to go to Paris. And I visited that store before the, um, the um, before it closed. It's still an active, vibrant business, but the store itself was closed. It was a little bright yellow store. Um, and I'm really happy I got to go there. Um, that's a real nice yarn. And this is another wash did this blue color right here. And the um, burgundy is candy skein, um, DK weight. It's a yarn made in Astoria, Oregon. So I really like all of these. Um, I'm, it did, the, the uh, sweater did stretch quite a bit. Um, I was worried about the neck um, because some people had um, expressed concern about it being too tight and um, I experimented with it and I ended up following the um, suggestions of many of the people on Ravelry and I started the neck in a bigger size and then I um, omitted some of the decreases so that it would be a little bit wider. I think though that generally all this superwash yarn probably would have spread, stretched out enough anyway. And I think, um, yeah, when um, Caitlin Hunter was designing it, she used a superwash and so she probably had a very good experience with the neck initially just because of the yarn she used. That's just my guess. But anyway, um, I redid the neck a little bit and felt real good about it. I also made several other modifications. Um, it's designed to be a short sleeve sweater. Um, I changed that. Um, it's designed to be cropped and I changed that. So I think one reason it was so popular is it had this wonderful color work. Um, you could stash bust and probably most avid knitters could immediately find enough yarn to make this sweater without too much trouble. And um, it, it just didn't use that much yarn. But um, because I made it, um, I didn't make it cropped and I made it more of a winter sweater and I guess, you you know, if you had the short sleeve when you could use it almost like a vest. So I thought about doing that. But um, as you can see, this um, 
super washed. Even though I did add some stitches here, I think most of this drapiness and stretch is from the um, Malabrigo here. So another change I made is that the pattern calls for lots of little fleas at intervals, um, which would mean you do use even less of this main color. I chose not to do that because I didn't want, I thought it would be too heavy to have um, the um, floats behind the whole sweater. So I just chose not to do that. As you can see, um, at least right here, I did not, um, I did not alternate skeins, but I think I did for the rest of it. And frankly, I'm not sure I even notice this most of the time, and I'm, I think I wore it quite a bit before I ever noticed this. I don't mind it. I think it's kind of fun, but there are times when you really might mind it. So um, if you're at all worried about that, you should definitely alternate skeins. Um, I put color on the sleeves, but I didn't put color on the bottom, even though that's what the um, pattern calls for. So, and one final little thing. Um, I think on the pattern, I is it this right here, this little V is thicker. So I eliminated one stitch on that. And also the pattern calls for little, little marks coming down this way and I took those out. So it was just my, my uh, way of doing it, nothing. No big change there. So anyway, whoop, now I'm sitting on my sweater. Um, I thought even though the soldatna is neither new nor um, new to me nor to you probably, um, it goes so nicely with this cardigan that I that I thought I'd show it off. So okay, let me take a little bit of tea here. Okay, well, I'm not quite finished with peace fleece. <laughs> so, um, as I've mentioned in previous podcasts, I'm really, really leaning towards the non-superwash wool um, um, for a host of reasons that I'll keep talking about. Just not anything really against the superwash. Um, the colors are great. I do wear this quite a bit. Um, it has a little bit of a, I don't know if you can see it, but it really does have some um, fluffiness all around it. I don't think you can see it on here. So anyway, it's not that big a deal, um, but it's almost like, so instead of pilling, it almost seems to just have this, um, almost like a, I don't know, a little bumpiness or or little bumps. I don't know. It's it's nothing bad, and it's not um, it's not really why I'm not going super wash. It's just that um, um, I can I can really feel the difference. I can feel that it's um, it's not how the wool was originally made. You know. Um, but anyway, I, it, these colors are great. So use what you have. Um, okay, so I told you I ripped out the cardigan with the other piece fleece. Well, then I decided I would make something out of the piece fleece that I had wound up and I did, and I made a poncho out of this beautiful red. This yarn is um, Peace Fleece discontinued this color. So they do have some beautiful reds. Um, I think they have, I think they have one that I can show you. No. 
So this is the red um, that they have they have now. So you can see this is a very blue red. This is very different. Um, this is a very nice red. Um, and I have it for a particular reason <laughs> that now escapes me. But um, And this I got a number of years ago, so I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure what yarn, what wool they were using at the time I got this, but I'm pretty sure they're still doing this color, and it may be called amaranth. I'm not sure, but anyways, you can see quite a big difference from this right here. Um, anyway, so I decided that I would use it to make. A poncho and I've mentioned Isabel Kramer I think on, on my previous um, podcast I used a pattern that she designed called indigo frost and as you can see it's just a basic poncho here it has um, some yarn overs and a little bit of color work so, so as you can see, here are the yarn overs here and here. I think there were more that she had in the pattern. In fact, she may have had the yarn overs all the way through the pattern and I just decided against it. I, um, and then here is the color work, which um, I think I used um, Let Lopi for the white, and I used Noro Silk Garden for this blue. So you can see it's changing color a little bit there because it's Noro. So anyway, I'll, and I'll show you the back, the um, far back here. So here it is. And a little split here. Okay, so here's the thing. I like this a lot. I'm not where I'm. I'm just wondering if I'm not a poncho person. Um, so anyway, I just haven't been wearing it, and I like it, and it's pretty. Um, but I'm just not wearing it. It's a great pattern. I highly recommend it. Um, so I'm not sure. The pattern calls for worsted weight. And um, I think that for me, Peace Please feels almost more like an Aran weight. Um, and maybe that's one reason why my even though I had gauge though, I had gauge on both of these, so I don't think I can blame it on the weight of the yarn. But somehow, um, I feel like the original, um, this pattern that Isabel Kramer designed, it seemed like it just wasn't quite this firm of a, um, of a fabric. I don't know. Maybe it's just not that practical for me because I need pockets. Um, so I'm not sure. Love the pattern, love the color. I think it looks great, but I'm just not really sure if I'm, um, if I'm a poncho person. And then I started thinking, oh boy, I never did get that. Um, everyday cardigan out of my system and I could I could make a little easier um, pattern today than I than uh, the peacefully seamed version so anyway I'm <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that poncho we'll see I'll try and make myself wear it more often and see if I can just get into the swing of it um, there's no place for my handkerchief though <laughs> 
Okay, so um, let me see. Do I have anything else to say about Peace Fleece? Um, I don't think so, but it's a nifty yarn. Oh, I know. Yes, I do. So um, last night when I was reading about the um, Peace Fleece history and reminding myself how it worked, um, um, I... I saw a reference to it on um, Fat Squirrel Speaks. She has a podcast. She's had many, many, many episodes. And on one of them, she talked about um, Peace Fleece and compared it to four or five other woolen spun yarns all made in the United States. And she is very, very bright person, and she has some thoughtful things to say comparing um, all these yarns. It was really good for me to hear because I didn't know about any of those yarns except for the Brooklyn Tweed that she mentioned. And um, I'm trying to pay more attention to what's going on here in this country and what yarn's being made here. So I'm not always lusting after those European yarns, particularly the Scandinavian yarns. Um, beautiful as they are, I should know more about what's being raised right here in the United States. So anyway, that was very useful. So if you want to hear her talk about wool and spun yarn, um, that would be a great thing to listen to, and I'll put the um, link below here. Um, one thing that does seem to be true about woolen spun is um, at least people are express, express concern that woolen spun is not as sturdy as the worsted spun. So um, I guess that's something to consider. Um, all the Shetland wool, I think, is wool and spun. And um, I, I do, th I think it's great for color work and it almost felts up together. So um, I don't know, something to be thinking about and to learn more about for sure. Okay, so I think the last thing I want to tell you about in terms of knitting is that in my last episode, I um, sh I was showing you my uh, the Ultimate Lazy Cardigan, and um, that was partly made of silk. So it was silk and wool and mohair. And I thought that it stretched out quite a bit, which I happened to be fine with, and in fact, happy with, but um, I was a little surprised at the outcome and said I hadn't had much experience with silk. Well, it turns out that's not true. And I made, at one point, I made 10 or 11 Noro Silk Garden shawls and it's a free pattern called Noro Woven Stitch. So this is what it looks like. It's a triangular shawl. It gets very long and thin on the side, so it's super useful. It has a neat woven stitch here. Let's see if you can see that. The way it works is the back is always purled, just a plain purl. And then on this side, you do a slip knit and on one row and a knit slip on the other row. And then you can see the, the triangular shawl with the increases along the, the line there and, prob and also at the end. So um, it's free pattern. I usually wear it like this if I'm out and sometimes I tie it up to make it nice and warm. So this is one's my favorite. I love it. I wear it all the time. And 
when I get cold at home and I'm just reading, I, I tend to do this. So this was my first one. Isn't that great? <laughs> I just love it. This one I think is the original size and then the next one I made a little bigger. I love the colors down here. And anytime I need some color inspiration, I'd say anything from here on, all these colors right here, I just love to see how they bump up together. So that is a real neat one. And then um, this goes with a lot of things that I, I have so good and this one I actually made for my husband and you can see he was right there with me as I was picking colors I think the camera's making it just a tiny bit brighter um, but and I made this one a lot bigger. <laughs> so I just love these. I really love these shawls. Um, so if you don't like purling, you might find it irritating. I, I don't mind it, maybe because I do continental. Um, you can see there's some really fun colors in there. Um, So silk garden is about 40 something percent silk, about 40 something percent mohair, and then it has about 10 percent wool. So one friend I made these, one of these for said, I just can't wear wool. And that's clearly not the problem. Maybe it's the uh, mohair that's irritating her. So a few people couldn't wear them. Um, uh, but I think most they I think most people like them. That's just the nature of the yarn right there. Um, so what I did with these is I really did block them um, not it, not as hard as I possibly could, but I really did stretch them out. I have blocking wires. And I use those to, to really stretch them. And the drapiness and everything with these once blocked, it, it really changes the look of it. So um, it's going to be a, a much bigger shawl if you block it. Um, and it was it just really, really drapey and nice. I also find it to be pretty warm. So um, even though it doesn't have much wool in it between the silk and the mohair, they're very toasty. So um, anyway, so I think you can count on silk being drapier. Um, and I think it's I think it's warm. So anyway, that's my experience. I thought I'd better clear up the misconception that I didn't know anything about silk when I really did. So anyway. Okay. One, okay, one or two last things. Um, I get a lot of solace and comfort from listening to podcasts. And one that I was listening to recently was Hey Brownberry. Um, I th it, her name is Morris. And she's really got a great, um, just a wonderful feeling from watching her. She's in Florida. And Florida... I think I live closer to Mexico than I do to Florida. We are really diametrically across the country from each other, um, very far away, different climate completely, but here we are in the same country. Um, she was talking about sewing. Now, as I've mentioned, I have this little right up above my head here is a pile of yarn, of fabric and it's the remains of all the uh, fabric that I had that I 
went through back in the mask making days. And that's my, the, the uh, fabric that I saved after, after have, giving away like three boxes of, of fabric and fabric notion, yeah, um, sewing notions and all that kind of thing. I, I really did take a big break from sewing, but I still have some fabric left and I'd like to make myself a summer dress, hopefully, um, maybe this spring. Um, anyway, what she was talking about though, was that she hadn't sewn much. I mean, she knew some basics, but she decided to sign up for a class. So I'll find the link to her episode on this because she talks about where she took the sewing class. Um, but what it is, is hand sewing. At least initially, she was working on hand sewing. So the idea of making something by hand instead of sewing it on the sewing machine, it's pretty intriguing. Certainly, it would be a lot faster to go on the machine, but I've always found the machine to be the problem for me and sewing. Um, that and the fact that you can't, um, once you cut into that fabric, um, you're committed. But um, whereas you can re you can tear up a sweater and start over if you really want to. Um, anyway, she was talking about hand sewing and it sounded intriguing and it sounded like a way to get involved with the craft without having that barrier of the um, sewing machine and dealing with threading the needle and changing the bobbin thread. That's the part that just drives me crazy. And also the fact that you're stuck wherever your machine is, whereas with knitting or hand sewing, you could go sit with other people in a different room or go to the coffee shop or visit a friend a lot easier. So anyway, um, I'm intrigued by that. Um, the other thing is that Mars was talking about um, um, in her show notes, she credited Fat Squirrel Speaks for the inspiration for the hand sewing. So then I went on um, that um, podcast and listened to... Um, I don't know the name of the woman who has Fat Squirrel Speaks, but anyway, she was talking about a book that she had read about hand sewing and the advantages and disadvantages of it. And again, I found it intriguing. So something to think about. It certainly won't take me away from too much from the knitting, but it might be a way for me to, to um, get back into sewing and maybe enjoy it a little bit more. So anyway, those are just some ideas that I'm thinking about. Okay, and then finally, um, I do have several works in progress. I'm almost finished with my striped sweater, so next time I do one of these, I'll probably have that on. Um, and that's going pretty nicely. And um, I'm working on a uh, little cowl um, that I signed up for the Wooly Thistle Accessories Cowl, and I'm working on that. And I should, um, I forgot to bring it out here with me, but um, I should have that pretty far along by the time I see you as well. Okay, let me think. Is there anything else that I wanted to talk about? I think not. Um, I'm going to try not to watch the news too much, but my heart goes out for the people who are suffering in the world right now. And um, I, um, I hope we see some positive change soon. So anyway... Take care, take care of yourselves, and happy knitting. Bye.